Ciao everybody, welcome back to the Bianca Narizone channel. My name is Julian Gennati and I will be doing a re match reaction uh, pretty much the day after of Match Day 31, Juventus vs Inter, the Derby d'Italia. And in this video, I'll be going over a, some stats, Allegri's quotes post-match, Rabio has a quote that we're going to use and I think everybody knows what that's going to be. We have some match ratings and uh, my overall thoughts on the performance of every party involved. Um, and when I say that, I mean both teams, referees, whatnot. So before we do that, um, you can see at the bottom of the screen on the ticker there, the Sporting app, use it, download it. I've said it time and again. Also at the bottom right hand side of your screens, join the members club, do it, sign up. It's easy. You get lots of stuff going on with this uh, Bianca Arizona community and it's a good time. So let's start off by talking about basically the match facts of the game, the match events. And throughout this, the match events, I will be talking about obviously the referee because he was heavily involved in a lot of decisions and he, a ref should not have this much say in a match or have this much um, input influence uh, in, in a match, especially of this magnitude. But again, it always happens. We, we can't be shocked. We can't be surprised. First, uh, the reverse fixture, penalty on, on uh, Dumfries, on Alexandro, lots of controversy there. Last year with Quadrado, the two penalties, um, it is what it is. But let's start from the beginning. Literally one minute into the match, Latour Martinez boots <laughs> Locatelli right in the face. You saw his eye, everyone saw his eye, it looked disgusting. Um, that's a red card, I'm sorry. He missed it. I understand why it wasn't called. I shouldn't have to understand why it's not called, but I do understand why it's not called. First minute of the game, massive game. You don't want to send someone off. A referee should not think like that. A referee should think objectively. And this, and it's weird because later on in the match, he did think objectively for a rule that shouldn't matter. So it was weird. That was a weird one to me. But should have been a red card first minute. Uh, Martinez boot in the face. Um, so he got a yellow, sure. Later on, he has a really poorly timed challenge on Chiellini. Could have got a second yellow, didn't. Okay. I get that one too. It is what it is. Rabio also got away with a couple. Um, he got a yellow card originally, and then he, he did foul. For, it was Barella or somebody in the first half again, like literally 10 minutes later, five minutes later. And he should have been sent off as well for a second yellow. So, oof, whatever. Okay. Um, now, we'll go to the penalty. And on first looking, Marata touches the ball. Then Dumfries regains possession. And Sandra Marata also tackle him again. I've seen him not given. I've seen him given. We were, we were stuck once they went to VAR. If, if it was, if they didn't go to VAR, it's, until we play on but the VAR person told him to check and he checked and penalty shot okay whatever here's where my first point about I don't I understand how the game goes for a ref and keeping the game flow and making a subjective rather than objective decision objectively red card first minute should have been if, if you're going strictly by the rule book now here in the penalty aspect Chalhanoglu misses the, f the first attempt. If you haven't seen the game, get ready for this one. He misses the first attempt. Danilo gets to the ball, gets to the rebound first, and Chalhanoglu kicks Danilo's leg. And referee calls a foul on Chalhanoglu, so you be Juventus' ball. And on the ensuing play, though, the ball ends up in Juventus' net, so Inter celebrate, but the ref already blew the whistle, called a foul. So, fine, correct. And it was going to be Juventus' ball, until VAR told the referee in his ear to come check and see if there was encroachment from the lit in which the penalty was retaken. That is, it is what it is. That is the rule. It's in the rule book. That's why I don't understand his objective viewpoint there, but not for the first minute in a clear red card. The referee was quite egregious on a couple of plays, um, but it was bad throughout for both teams. But in this specific uh, scenario, it's in the rule book. 
you have to understand we were the beneficiaries of this uh, type of call back in uh, the first half of the season with Dybala. Someone on, I think it was the Champions League game, they encroached, Dybala missed, retaken, he scores. Same thing happened today. It's just under the scales because everybody's watching Juventus Inter. Um, Serie A is a farce of a, of a, of a refereeing uh, society, whatever, I, I forget what it's called. Um, Pure Luigi Colina runs it or something, <laughs> um, or used to run it. So it sucks, but at the end of the day, it is what it is. I don't, I'm not saying I agree with it, but it's in the rule book. So I can't be mad at that. I can't be mad at that. I knew it was coming. Um, fast forward. To, so we go into the half, uh, halftime down one. No. Fast forward to the second half, more refereeing decisions are kind of curious. Um, letting some plays go that shouldn't have been let go, some that were ticky tack foul, like not consistent whatsoever on the night. And then comes the incident, I forget what minute, but the one where Zakaria was fouled and he was inside the box, but the referee called the, pen, or the foul outside the box, but he got a free kick out of it. There are clear, and I, this is again, <laughs> they went to VAR to check it. There are people on the internet who don't have the technology that the VAR Serie A referees do have that were able to pause it perfectly where Dennis Zakaria got pushed. If the, if the referee is calling a foul on, the, on, on that play, and you look at that on VAR, it's clear as day that is a penalty. That is the most egregious miss of, of the uh, of the game. Because the first minute, Martinez high boot on Locatelli. I, I get why. I shouldn't have to understand why, like I said, but I get why. This one, this this is still pictures. This is, you had the opportunity to go to the VAR room like you did in the first half for the first penalty. And it, it's obvious. <laughs> um, but again, this this referee is, is not the sole reason why we lost. It helped a bit why we lost, but it was not the main reason why. Again, how many chances did we have to score goals? Many. This is one of our best games of the year in terms of dominating the ball, well not dominating the ball, but like having the ball and creating chances, playing vertically. Um, the, the ball flu or the fluidity of, of playing the ball was, was better, was probably best of the season, I'd say. Um, I guess a big team, or a good team at least. And we came up empty, we came up with donuts. I remember the Vlavic turn in the second half and he curled it wide with his right foot. He, 116 million euro striker you, you gotta score that bud I'm sorry you have to score that Dybala when he dances through everybody and then he doesn't shoot the ball because he lets the ball roll to Vlavic I think or something and the defender kicked it away shoot the ball buddy Morata first half header <laughs> like those are those are clear cut chances then the ball hitting the crossbar and the, that's unlucky and then Zakaria's strike off the post is unlucky so we did create lots of chances, but we got shit housed, and this is this is coming. How many teams have we shit housed this season into in, into grimy results? Inter did the exact same thing today. They defended pretty well, and they they scored a grimy goal, and we've been doing that all season. So again. I'm not happy. Obviously, I'm not happy with the result. Jeez. I don't know why I'm explaining that. But all in all, did we do enough to win the game? Probably. But that doesn't matter because we didn't win the game and the ball did not go in their net. That's the main issue. That's been the main issue all year. It was a lot better today. Yes, 100%. A lot better. I was, I was shocked that we played that well. However... The ball doesn't end up in the net. You're never going to win a game, and that and that's and that's the story of the game. And that like yes, really crappy refing, but it's not the sole reason why we lost. It is not in the top 
half of why we lost. The referee called a penalty shot. It was a penalty shot at the end of the day. You can't change that. His mind, he went by the rule book to have it retaken. It is what it is. The two egregious things he missed were a Martinez red card in the first minute. And if he calls a foul on, Z on Zakaria there, it's a penalty shot if you go to VAR. It is what it is. But we would still have to go up and score it, so I can't necessarily say it's going to be 1-1. One -one. I can't say we're going to break in or down if they go to 10 men for 89 minutes. I can't say that. I don't know. I never happened. I, I don't know. It, would it boost our odds? Absolutely. However, we can't. I don't do ifs, ands, or maybes. I only do absolutes, to quote a famous Liverpoolian. <laughs> um, so, those are the match events. Let's go to the stats now. I know I bored you with that first opening part, but we'll get into the meat and potatoes of it now. Ball possession, uh, we, we won by a little bit. doesn't really matter because the shots on goal, shots off goal, it tells the story more. Corner kicks, uh, attacks, it, it, tells, it tells the story more. But again, how many times have we been on the opposite side of that and we lose or we win the game and we shit house our way to a result? Inter did the exact same thing today. It is what it is. Stats don't mean much unless you have more goals than the other team. <laughs> uh, so take a look at those. They're all positive for Juventus. They're all, except the yellow cards, obviously we tied, but they're all positive for Juventus and we still took a loss. Now let's move on to what the coach had to say. Um, he, he took it a little bit. He, 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 I don't know what to make of his comments, but let's avoid saying things that are not useful at the moment. Uh, at this moment, I would talk about the team's performance, a good game, a good performance. We created a lot of shot, a lot, a lot and shot on goal. He's correct. Um, it's a shame about the defeat. I think there's room for improvement today. We verticalized more and played a good game on a very technical level. Absolutely. Um, were there mistakes? Absolutely. But at the end of the day, we, we, that was one of our better games of the year. Um, from now on, it can be said that Juventus are definitely out of Scudetto. I, I've been saying this forever. Like, we were. <laughs> uh, now we have to score as many points as possible for fourth place and prepare to start well next year and win the championship. Yes, that is absolutely correct. Do not crap away four results at the beginning of the year and you're in the discussion next year. Um, there's room for improvement. Today in the match, I really liked the team more. Uh, Rabio, Zakaria, Vlavic touched many balls. <laughs> nice. Um, and he's absolutely right. Rabio was very good. Rabio was very good today. Uh, Zakaria, he's very good today. Vlavic, I wanted him to be a little bit stronger against the screen yard. Was he fouled a lot? Yes. But you're 6'3", buddy. You're strong. Just deal with it. Um, there are many good things to start next year with the aim of winning the championship. After a year together, we will start better. He's saying that now, so it better happen come August. Uh, we need to get as many points as possible to keep the fourth place because we're are five points behind us. Yep, they're coming strong. Uh, we started badly and we recovered many points. In the decisive matches, we were condemned by the moments in the game. We must see the glass half full. The boys have grown and will become an important team. And then he goes on to talk about Dybala. Replacing Dybala, uh, we have to meet within with the club to take stock of the situation after the game is not the right time. Um, so Dybala was decent in the first half, ghosted the second half. And that's all I got to say about him. I'm not, not too miffed about him leaving to be honest and i think i've said that before on this uh this channel not too miffed finally uh, i had a doubt about rabia who's played a lot he's also been criticized or he's always been criticized but tonight he played a really great game i have to congratulate him by playing him with locatelli we leave the center the center right freer for dibala then zakaria came on and had a good game I think the tactic was, when we did have the ball, it was to free up Dybala on the right-hand side there. Um, he's exactly right with Rabio and Locatelli playing. Obviously left for Rabio, Locatelli more centrally when we had the ball, and Zakaria when we had the ball when he came in. And then uh, when we were defending, Dybala was a magnet to Brozovic, which was pretty funny. Um, he did exactly what Kulusevski couldn't do. <laughs> so that's pretty funny. 
So credit to Dubal as well on that. So yeah, um, that's Allegri's like quotes. What do you let me know what you think about what he has to say? He he was not the problem today. If people are blaming Allegri, he was not the problem today. There was chances made. He set up the team perfectly. Um, they were just they were shit housed and we couldn't score a goal. And now on to Rabio, and now he's he's probably going to get into the FIGC's bad books. Uh, the referee decided the game. The foul on Zakaria was in the box, and it's an important moment. He is right. Uh, we have to continue like this. We did really well. He's right again. I'm happy with my performance in that of the team. We played a great game, doing what the coach asked us to do. The only thing we missed was the goal. Absolutely. We made a mistake on the penalty. Yep, absolutely. And the same thing against Villarreal. So I'll go back to this or this part of the quote. Did the players not say, oh, we'll learn from the Villarreal game? Obviously, they didn't. It's, what, half a month later? Same mistakes. Diving in, in the box. Not converting your chances. We'll carry on. Uh, for me, it's one of the better games, or it's one of the games where we played better. With while with Villarreal, we played very well until ten minutes from the end. Today, we had a goal post too because they had the crossbar as well. Maybe there was also a penalty, and it could have changed the game. Well, absolutely. Again, if you do ifs, ands, and maybes, or coulds, whatever, that game could be three one for Juventus, but it didn't happen, so it doesn't matter. The ball did not enter their goal. Doesn't matter. Um, and Ravi also had a, had a Instagram post saying we played eleven v twelve tonight, and I, I oof, he might get fined, <laughs> which is fine. Um, he he makes enough money to pay that fine quite easily. Now we'll go to ratings. Um, I'm not sure who did these ratings because I didn't do those ratings. Maybe it was just a sporting app in itself. But uh, I agree with most of it. Um, a lot of yellows, and Shezny was good um, when he had to be. He wasn't very busy, but again, he stopped. He technically stopped the penalty shot. Um, and it was close to the second one, and he commanded his box really well. As you can see, Zakaria was very good. Um, Moise Keane, at this point, you better, like, you just got to use Sule. Because Moise Keane offers absolutely zero. Especially against better teams. He just offers nothing. He needs to get out. Like Raspadori needs to replace Moise Keane. Um, and other than that, Bernadeschi coming on is a, is a black hole. Doesn't do anything. I thought it was funny putting Dechilio on. <laughs> just for the for the more attacking option was Dechilio as a left back. Arthur came on, did not much. Um, Zakaria came on, played very well. So those are the subs. In terms of individual players, again, Delit, Chiellini ate everything up in the air. Uh, Sandro, not good again. Danilo was a little bit misfiring as well. Locatelli was, was a warrior for the first however long he played. Rabio was very good. Um, again, could have been sent off quite easily, but he was very good. Quadrado, eh. Um, Dybala, like I said, very pretty good in the first half. Ghost second half. Morata, mm, and Vlavic. Eh. You can't have, you can't let, you can't need so many chances to score one goal. The reason why Vlavic was brought in because he had a very good conversion rate. Morata, we know that he needs many chances to score, but that needs to change. And it's never going to change at, at 29, turning 30 years old. It's a shame because he's, he's a likable player. He's a very likable player. He loves the team and all that, but you're, you're an attacking player. Mandzukic scores that goal. If he's going to take the role on Mandzukic, he's, Mandzukic scores that goal. The header in the first half. So... It is what it is. Uh, we move on. It's the fight for fourth, it, and we'll continue to play that drum or beat that drum. I will be joining Justin live tomorrow. I think there's going to be a little bit of a debate because he seems to think the refereeing was absolutely the only reason why we lost, and I think I'm going to have a little, a little debate with Justin, and we'll see what Davide has to say as well. 
Um, so with that, tune in for the live show on Monday, April 4th, uh, usual time, 4.45, 5 o'clock uh, Eastern Standard Time, and then uh, 11 o'clock CEST. And we'll break this game down more. We'll give our thoughts and, and bounce the, uh, uh, ideas off each other. Like this video, subscribe to the channel, click the bell icon to stay notified, and like I said, download the Sporting app, join our members club, and we'll talk to you as soon as possible. Thank you all for watching. Forza Juve still, until the end. Fino alla fine.